Python for Cybersecurity project is finally finished. After several levels and many projects and through many months of procrastination, I have finally finished this project. Before I move on to my next project, I thought I would just do a video recap of the project itself, give you guys some background info. Then I'm gonna move on to just the five lessons that I learned throughout the project in and of itself. And finally, I'll give you some recommendations on what you can do to follow this project. So let's go ahead and get started. With the inspiration of Devin Crawford, in fact, I like to call myself a Devin Crawford wannabe who will never be as talented, but who addresses the cybersecurity side of IT. There we go. Okay. So anyway, with some inspiration from Devin Crawford and some personal ideas on how I wanted to document a project, I launched the Python project for cybersecurity on March 24th, 2019. My deadline was by mid-May 2019 to complete this. Uh, if you guys are not familiar, I had three levels and three projects. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make that deadline. In fact, I really did procrastinate a lot of this project. I was really motivated at first and then it declined very much so. I did finish the project in the end. Um, and really the premise behind this project was to give the audience and myself two things. One, to document how I like to break up and organize my personal projects in cybersecurity. Organization was the first thing, and the second thing was for me to continue to learn Python in a cybersecurity specific way. I found some different courses, and really it was just to document my journey on Python. By the end of level three in, in project three, I was finally able to, to get some application portion of what I was learning. And really it was fun to create what I did in project three. If you guys aren't familiar with the project, I recommend you go start with the Kickstarter video and, and continue down the line. Uh, there's a playlist that I also link in the cards. Level one was outlining the basics of Python itself just working with the fundamentals. Project one was working with five different many projects. Level two was addressing the security side of cybersecurity. I found a course that is on stationx.net that really outlined the security side of Python. I followed along in that course and then I did a keylogger, a very basic keylogger uh, on my project two. And then level three was me learning Pygame, the Pygame uh, library module, which you can create little 2D mini games in Python. And project three was creating a Trojan with that uh, little mini game that I created uh, and basically hooking up my keylogger that I did in project two to the game that I did in project three and basically having a Trojan in and of itself. That is the overview of the Python project for cybersecurity. Now for the five lessons that I learned, starting with lesson number one, which was honesty. Being honest and authentic about what I was learning, what I didn't understand, what I did understand and how I could actually apply this knowledge uh, to, to a specific project was something that was a struggle for me at times. Being completely honest, you know, through the lens of a video, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. You can say, yeah, uh, I did the Trojan, but you could really just copy someone else's code. Lesson two transitions into application piece is important. Learning an online course is great. You get some good information, you take some great notes, and maybe you can apply some of those theoretical or practical skills or concepts to your everyday job or whatever you're trying to do. However, there's something to be said if you can actually apply what you're learning and do something on your own. Number three was learning retention. Because I didn't meet the deadline, uh, the mid-May 2019 deadline, I severely suffered from uh, learning retention. I couldn't recall what I was learning. I maybe learned it from a course two weeks prior and that was the last time I learned and I couldn't recall anything that I was learning. Lesson four is meeting an expected deadline. Procrastination got the best of me, procrastination in life. And uh, I was really trying to make this project be completed by mid-May. Didn't happen, like at all. The biggest thing, in my opinion, is just doing one hour of learning a day, not eight hours learning a day, one hour learning a day. That is a lot better. And you're gonna meet, be able to meet your deadline uh, in doing that than if you're gonna try to cram everything in within a week. Number five was do not be defensive about critiques. I did a video, uh, project two with the keylogger video, and I, I really closely followed Zaid's keylogger if you are not familiar. I got some comments in the comment section below and, and mostly positive. Um, there was a few critiques about how this keylogger was super simple or that you're a script kitty kind of thing. I was very defensive in what they were talking about when they were critiquing me. But I came to realize that I shouldn't be defensive about these critiques. In fact, I should 
absorb them because these are the critiques that are going to help me improve and really make, let's say, an advanced keylogger. The keylogger was super basic and it was very similarly aligned to Zaid's. I had some critiques and I need to embrace those critiques. Okay, recommendations for this project. I have four recommendations. Recommendation number one, take your own notes. If you're going to follow along, you can see my notes and you can use them as a reference. Taking your own notes is going to do two things. One, it's going to make sure that you can reference them when you do forget or procrastinate. And two, it's a good way to uh, retain what you're learning. Take your own notes and I, I would recommend that uh, you can use mine, but just take your own notes. Recommendation number two, try your hardest to apply what you're learning. The levels are there for you to absorb and learn as much information as possible and take good notes. The projects are there for you to apply what you learn. Apply. Do not BS what you're trying to do. Try to apply what you're learning um, with those levels. You can use the notes, but don't go around and, and go to the videos again and, and just basically copy and paste the code. Apply what you're learning. The projects are there for a reason. Recommendation number three, don't take the Pygame module on Pluralsight. That sucked. In my opinion, it was a horrible module. Uh, it was a horrible course. Literally, the dude went way too fast. Um, he, it just was not. For my, for my uh, learning style, it wasn't good. I would use Centex. I'll leave a link in the description below. And he has a Pygame module playlist. Very good. I followed his when I was doing the Project 3, and it was very good. Recommendation number four, as the cliche goes, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Look. What, at what you can do instead of maybe copying Zay's exact keylogger for your project too, look into seeing how you could maybe make a different keylogger that appends all the keystrokes to a .txt format file, and then you can extract that .txt format file, whatever. Try to challenge yourself in what you're trying to do. Try to add extra features. Try to see what you can do. I really hope this project was helpful and provided some sort of structure and documentation along the way. I for sure learned a lot of lessons and I learned a lot of new things with Python. That is it for today's video. Again, not very exciting, but if you guys are really interested in seeing my whole experience, I will leave a, a link to the Google Docs in the description. Uh, go and read that and all the links are there and all everything is there. So just go do that if you really want. Until the next project, which I will be announcing soon, I will see you next time. Keep Python coding.